And I want to speak to you. Um, first, I'm going to talk about some hell tonight, too. God spoke to me to really impact that tonight. Because there's lots of people you know that aren't born again that really need to hear about hell. Right, guys? And they're all around us. They're everywhere. Souls are dying all over the world. And you guys been watching the news about the volcano in Hawaii that's all the fire? Well, those kind of fires are in hell. Hell is in the middle of the earth, and those fires flow in rivers down there. And at times you can see skeletons in them burning and screaming that have been thrown into hell fire. And uh, I was telling Pastor about it today at lunch. I want to give them honor also for bringing us their precious, precious, precious people. Pastor and his wife and all the church, too, you have treated us so great. We love you much. But we've got to get serious about our salvation. How quick does time go? Think about it. Think about it, guys. You that's grandmothers, raise your hand, and grandfathers. Yes. Amen. This year I'm supposed to have a... Uh, a grandson than a great grandchild born this year and uh, other people I know they're getting ready to have babies and uh, God is moving quick pastor was talking about the same thing God told me that there's going to be a, a move of God so great that it's going to be just a flow of God for years and years and pastor didn't know it but I'm writing a book uh, on heaven or hell eternal damnation and Amazon's going to be printing it. And Marcel and Dexter and I are working on it. And it's powerful. All of my testimony in there of hell when I went in and came out, the 30 nights. And then my life story up to that time. And then later God told me to write another book about after I saw hell. That's when all hell breaks loose. I'm serious. I'm, I'm serious. I've had a son die of cancer, a young son. I I've been... Um, Angels has literally appeared to me and talked to me, and angels are real. I'm going to talk on that, too, because I promised you in sound. But we need to know how big God is. How many know how big God is? How many? Uh, how many? Let me see them hands. I, I'm kind of disoriented up here. My little sweetheart, I don't know what's wrong with her. You want to... <laughs> Open my bottle of water, honey. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Is there anointing on it? Is it it's that anointing oil he put on us. He gave us some real oil from the Bible. Pastor did. And we anointed ourselves sitting over there and we felt drunk. I'm serious. Have you ever anointed your congregation with it? Oh, you got to. Oh, my Lord. You, you, you got to tell them that mystery. Come on, tell them. We got to have fun here tonight. We may never be back this way for a while. Tell them. Well, all right, I'll tell you really quick. When we were we were in Chicago yesterday, okay, we I'm thinking when we flew in. While we were at this conference with Brother Sadu, and just before we were in Chicago, Brother Sadu and Bruce Allen were in Washington D.C. having a conference. There's a, a gentleman there from Virginia, and he has a Bible. So he's in his 60s, a very humble man. And he has a Bible and. Oil started coming out of the pages. Now, I've seen things like this. I've seen oil dripping out of my hands. You wipe it off and keep dripping out. So oil came out of the pages, started coming out of Psalm 39. And then it started coming out of the book of Revelation. And then it started coming out of all the pages between Psalm 39 and the book of Revelation, oil just pouring out of his Bible. I mean, his pages are soaked with oil. So then he put his Bible in a in a clear, like, bucket. It's looking like about a five-gallon bucket because the oil was coming out of it. So now for months, it's been producing eight gallons of oil a week. More than a gallon a day comes out of the Bible. And it's, it's tasteless and odorless, but it's oil. And he sought the Lord and sought the Lord and said, Lord, why is oil coming out of Psalm 39? And the, then the Lord finally spoke to him and said, it represents the 39 stripes I took for healing. He said, use this oil to anoint people, and I'll heal them. But he said, don't idolize the oil, and don't sell it. Don't you dare sell it or idolize it. Keep your eyes on me, and give the oil away free to whoever wants it. So he bottles it and gives it away free. 
So Brother Sadhu showed me, Brother Sadhu was there. He said, I saw the Bible. I saw the oil coming out of it. He said, I, and this man is really humble and he gives God all the glory. So they gave him a bunch of bottles. So they gave us a few bottles. And so uh, we gave them some bottles. Then they started anointing each other. Then they couldn't pay attention after that. <laughs> they were getting distracted by the presence of God. That's what she's talking about. Yes, that's real. We, you guys want to know and touch on you tonight? Yes. Wouldn't that be? Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. I'm going to read you that Psalms, Psalms 39. I said I will take heed to my ways, amen, and that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Psalms 39. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace, even for good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me while I, wow, wow, I feel the Holy Ghost. The fire burned within his heart, he said. Then spake I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days. What is it that I may know how frail I am? Think about this, guys. This is why the oil is pouring out of there. God is crying unto us to turn from our sins. Amen? Oh, my, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Behold, I has made my days. Oh, my goodness. I feel the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry. Is nothing before thee. Our days are nothing. If you blink your eyes, 10 years goes by. You blink your eyes, 30 years goes by, right? And you turn around, it's already the seventh month of our year. From January, it's that quick. How quick time goes. This word is real. It's so powerful. This is why I believe he got that precious oil as a treasure. That is a treasure from heaven. Hallelujah. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. I feel God. I can hardly read this. Oh, my God. Thank you. Yes, thank you, God. Wow. Put your hands up, children. I hear this pastor said, I've come to visit my people tonight. I've come to refresh you tonight, saith the Lord. I've come with my holy power. For you are my children. I love you, saith the heavenly Father. I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh, Jesus. But some of you, your wells are going dry. Some of you need the, my presence, have a craving and a passion for my presence, you do. Wow. But some of you leave me on the back of the stove till you're ready for me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Woo, pastors. Sweets, there's a power of God in here. He said, I want you to know me. And how are you going to know me if you keep me on the back of the burner? Bring me forth, children. Many of you have let the cares of the world pull you away from where I'm at. Come back, come back, saith the Lord. Wow. Come back and repent. And see if I'll not leave a blessing, saith the Lord. Wow, children, wow. I'm just going to obey God. The, the Spirit of the Lord is drawing us tonight. He's drawing us from our inward parts, isn't he? You feel that pulling? That's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. He wants you to know he saved you with Jesus, his precious blood, this blood book. 
after my son had passed away with cancer and things, I was already working on this book in the prayer book. And the Holy Ghost, I couldn't hardly do any grieving over my baby. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me in my prayer room. He said, come and hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Come, I want to minister to you. And he really ministered to me. And he said, pick up that microphone and start talking. And that poured out of me and poured out of me up till daylight. And those, that's how that book, all my books are written of the anointing of the Lord. And when you stop and you think, how great is God? And God said to me, you have had a, you have to go to this count meeting. He'd only been dead two days. He said, well, go, go there and cry. He said, there ain't no sense crying here. So I went on the plane to a, somewhere, I think North Carolina. And when I got there, uh, God's presence was so strong. They put me in a cabin by the river. And I was down there praying and talking to God. And when I went to the tent that night, it's a tent. They hadn't had a tent meeting in 50 years, 50 years. And I got up there and I said, God, I can't do this. You're going to have to do it for me. And Jesus began to speak through me to all those people. He had such wisdom that I could only do it by him, honey. Wisdom. And he was saying, there's so many people here that need me. There's so many people there. And he said, you piano player, you've been running for me 20 years. And the man had, he got up and repented and cried. He was a great piano player. And a man on the front seat had an oxygen tank. He jumped up, took that tank off, and run out of the tent. And one lady come up with a cancer, and I, I didn't do it. It was Jesus. Her, her breast was like a rock. And she said, please pray for me that God will heal me. I don't want the surgery. And I was so anointed, I just, I just barely, like a fog, I prayed for her. And then three months later, she let me know that God totally healed her of her cancer. But it was God. Sure wasn't me. And as you look at the majesty of God, he wants somebody to say, yes, Lord. Who will I send and who will go for me? Who will go and preach this everlasting gospel? God is calling us in the deep of his soul right here. That, that oil coming from that is holy. Holy oil. Do you just realize what a miracle that is? That is a rare jewel, a rare miracle. And I'm going to treasure my little bottle. I may, I may touch ins with it, but I treasure it. Go to touch my whole family with it. They're all going to get it. <laughs> that powerful oil, it was from, it's from heaven. Think about it. What state is that in? What country? Virginia. I'm from Tennessee. I could go there and get some more oil. Amen. <laughs> wow, but look at God touching the hillbillies, right? All of us hillbillies. <laughs> And this morning, there was the most beautiful Indian man and his wife here. Man, he was tall. He looked just like my grandfather was a full-blooded Cherokee. I said, I want to go to your Indian tribe and preach the gospel. He said, okay. So he's going he's gonna to call us and set up a meeting. Yeah. And I thought, Lord, I love the Indian tribes. How many is Indian in here? Wow. Raise your hands. Be proud. There he is. Stand up, brother. Do they know you? Does pastor know you? Yeah. God, tell him what, what tribe. Tell him what tribe you are. Yes, and her, she's from a different tribe. His wife. Yes. Praise, I've been to Omaha. Every tribe, I think, in the whole world, the Indian tribes. Went to the top of the world where the Creek tribe is, way up with the snow, and you got to take two or three planes. We went up there two years ago, or three, for my knee surgery and preached the gospel. Yes. At the end of the road, man, it ended up there. Yes, it cold and freezing. And we went and preached the gospel. And it was a little town with 500 people. They all come to church. There was nowhere else to go. So everybody, everybody came to church. And, and I was with uh, Joshua Mills. And he and I went. And, and we had a ball. We sold every book we took, plus we had another case accidentally Whitaker gave me. We sold that one, and they were so kind and so good. They said, you've got to come back and feed us again. They called it feed, you know, but we had a ball up there. 
and the Indian tribes. I love them. I, I go to New Mexico with the Navajo tribes. Yeah, and the, there's all kind of tribes there. And I know a lot of the leaders, and buddy, they love Jesus. They want the truth to their people. Amen? So I'm excited about that. But God said, who will go? Who will go for me? you got to lay your life down at times. you got to really, it's a sacrifice. How many can say that it's a sacrifice? Yes. How many in here have laid your cross down? Be honest. How many? How many? Stand up. Stand up. You laid your cross down. You laid it down. How many more? You got some more. Come on. This is God's service. Come on, guys. You know what your cross is? Do you know your calling? Yeah. You know your calling in God, you guys? So we're going to pray for you guys later, okay, on your calling, that what God's called you to do. Amen? And we got to stay in our lane. You know, if God's called you for a certain destination and you know it, that's the lane you stay in. Or they call it sometimes a track, like a racetrack. Amen? So we're here tonight to learn, right? And we're here tonight to love Jesus Christ. Amen? So it's, it's easy to love the Lord more than anything. Because once he touches you and saves you, something inside of you changes. Right, girls? Right, men, you change. How many know what I'm talking about? You don't want to go back to Egypt, do you? You don't want to go back to them old sinful nature. So every day you got to overcome something, you know. Maybe you were a liar all the time. Maybe you took drugs. Maybe you were just an alcoholic and you didn't really care. You just drank. God can set you free. God can take all those old habits from you and he can raise you up. Because he don't want you to go to hell. He don't want you to go down there and burn. Just think of that volcano in Hawaii and you'll straighten up. I mean, I'm serious. It's down there flowing in the middle of the earth. Hell is in the middle of the earth. She has many compartments. In the belly of hell is 17 miles high and three miles around with jail cells. Jail cells. And a dirt ledge four feet that comes out in a big circle. And there's skeletons in there clinging the bars with no flesh, just bones, and a vapor inside of them that floats. And they can scream. They can talk. And fire brothers and sisters engulfs them from their feet to their head. And they're screaming, let me die, let me die. And in these group of people are people that was in the occult, in witchcraft and sorcery and evil forces. That's where their souls go. And when they go to hell, they say, Satan promised me a kingdom. And they, the devil says, this is your kingdom, hell. I hate you as much as Christians. It's real. So if you're in any of that tonight, anybody watching, you better get out of it. Because hell is real and hell is hot. And uh, pastor asked me today, did I, I recognize anybody? I didn't want to recognize anybody. I told God I don't want to see anybody I ever knew. I did because I was so scared. Because when Christ took me by his hand amongst the fires, there was just a little place to walk. And the fires, you could feel the heat. And Christ would cry, sweetheart. His tears would come down and his hands, blood would come out of his hands. And you look down to his feet, blood was coming out of the nail prints in his feet. And he would cry and say, all of these, it's too late, too late, too late. It's my father's judgment. He said, I came to set them free. I came, they would not come here. And we got to understand who this God is. And, and God is great. All through the Bible, he raised up people like Moses, right? Elijah, Isaiah. He had them. He trained them. He taught them. Amen? And didn't Moses, his rod, sw swallow the snake that Pharaoh had? God is so great. Nothing's impossible with God. He wants you to love him. He wants you to trust him. And we're not perfect. None of us are perfect. It doesn't matter what fault you got. He'll help you overcome them. Children, he loves you. There's, I don't know how to tell you how much he loves you. Because when he was in hell with me, 
There was devil angels down there, angels of Satan. They had black wings and maggots crawling through their wings. They had four faces in hell, the, the, the demon angels. They had big black wings and that smelled just like mold and death. They had feet like claws, and they had spears in their hands. And when somebody had been thrown into hell into a pit or the fire, they would go there and shove them back in, and they would burn more and more and more. Evil, evil things. I mean, some of them were... The one Bill we saw, it was an Egyptian devil. It was at a face of an Egyptian god and fangs that bit him on the shoulder, Bill Weiss, when he went to hell. And I, I saw different types of demon angels. I never saw that one. and But every one of them, oh, how should I say it, had a, a commandment, assignment from Satan to do something evil to those pitiful souls. And there was never no rest. And there was a throne in a certain part of hell where the devil sat. And there was so much evil. Uh, Jesus stood back and we watched this. I don't know if I should tell you this. It really break your heart, though. Uh, the backslidden Christians, the ones that used to love God, they never returned to God. They died in their sins. Uh, they have them in a certain area in hell, and Satan mocks them. The demons mock them. said, you could have had Jesus, but we deceived you. We deceived you. That's why you need good churches like this. We deceived you and seduced you to go back and do, which was seven times worse. And in this area, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but it was a real throne made like of a precious metal, and Satan was sitting on it. He was very big. He looked like legend, that, that Satan in the movie, old movie legend. He had the bull horns. He had the hoof feet and the tail, and he was big muscle, muscle, but part of his face was crushed where Jesus had crushed his head when he w went down into hell. I actually saw that, what happened when Christ came down off the cross and they put him in a tomb. I, God showed me a vision of that years ago when I was crying out to God. I'll share it with you it's in a few minutes. But in that, where Satan was sitting, there was all kind of skeletons over here with chains around them, all kind of chains. And Jesus said, those are, those were, he said, they were my servants on the earth that Satan seduced them to go back into sin. And then the devil had a plan, got rid of them quick, and they ended up in hell. Not everybody does that now, not everyone. But these, these pitiful souls did, and they were moaning and crying, and Jesus and I was looking at them, and the devil would tell them to bring them forward. And one, the big demons were big, ugly things, and they'd bring them before Satan one at a time and make them bow before him. And the, de the devil would laugh and roar and say, I deceived you, I deceived you. You could have had him. He never said the word Jesus. He said you could have had him. But he said, he said now you're going to be tormented forever because you s served him on the earth, and I deceived you back to me. He really said those things, and it put the fear of God in me really quick to see something like that. And those, and that's why we got to pray for the backslider. We got to pray for the preachers that are in air. We got to pray like never before. We got to. And then I seen what he did. He said, oh. he said, take him and bury him all through hell. They ripped that skeleton apart piece by piece, and each part of the skeleton screamed for the other part of the body. You talk about torment, and you could, and Jesus was crying, and he, he looked up, to, out, up, up, and he had tears, and he said, my father, have mercy. And when he, he talked in two or three languages, Jesus did. And I said, Lord, what's going to happen? He said, Come, I want to show you something else. So we walked away from that horrible, horrible, each one of them people in chains, they were going to rip, rip them apart. 
I never told this much on TV, okay? So if you're watching and you're a backsliding preacher, you better come back to God. I've never told it. And, and I was in out here in California 20 years ago preaching 31-day revival. And I was downtown Los Angeles. I never told that part. And I lost my voice on the two nights before it closed. So this lady came and asked her pastor, could she help me because she saw hell. And we prayed, and I said, let her, let her speak. So she got up there, and she started telling things I never told about how when Satan came to her, he took her down by chains, where chains were dragging down the steps. She told it. And then she said there was a place in hell where Satan had his throne, and there was the backside ministers with chains on them that he had them come before him, just what I saw, and pull them apart and bury each part in hell and then scream for the other part of the body. It's, and I, I rarely tell it, and I started weeping and crying. And she said, you know, then God would have mercy because Jesus would pray, and then Lord would pull them back together and again. It's serious. I mean, you, you, the devil is evil. And we got to pray for our families, pray for our kids, pray for us, your strangers that don't know God. We got, like Pastor said, we got to get an evangelistic spirit, to, a burden for the lost. What if it was you burning in hell? What if you had not made it? You know, it's nothing to be afraid of because we have Jesus Christ. But I'm trying to warn you. If you're watching and you're full of the devil, you better get delivered. Satan don't play games, let me tell you. And when you see and you hear the actual movements of the word of God in hell, it makes you shake and you tremble and you want to do everything you can to save a soul. It makes you want to see that you see the end results of eternal damnation. They can never get out. Thousands of skeletons in holes and pits and fires screaming, Warn my family, warn my family. The only way you could tell it was a man or woman was by their voices or what nationality would by their voices. And you would want to pull them out of the fire and put them together again. It was so horrible. And they would scream and God's word was written in fire around their feet. Big black words, lovers of your own self more than God's commandment. Men loving men, women loving women with no fear of God or his commandments. This is, God's word is real. And that's why the oil was coming out of Psalms 39. God is trying to wake us with that miracle of oil. I really take that serious because it's out of the word of God. And that word of God is still calling to us to repent. It's so easy to get born again. You just got to repent, right? It's so, but a lot of people have so much pride, they don't think they have to. I was in uh, preaching at a church, Prince of Peace, in uh, South America. Uh, he has, I think he has a thousand churches, Pastor, Prince of Peace. And he's in Guatemala. It was Guatemala. And I was preaching away, and they have church all day, 24 hours, and different pastors come in every four hours, keep the church going. And I was up there preaching. His wife was my interpreter. Charity was her name. And... A big man came in. I mean, he was so tall. He was like almost seven foot. And the, the ushers was talking to him and stuff. And he said, the pastor's wife interpreted. He said, he wants to talk to you. And she said, uh, she said, wait till Mary quits preaching. He told, she told him, and then she'll talk to you. So I kept, I kept preaching, interpreting and everything. Then when we prayed for people all over. And he came up to me, and he knelt and I was as tall, standing up as he was kneeling. He was that big. And she interpreted what he said. He said, I've come a mighty long way to repent to you. I said, for what? And they translated. He said, I, when I first heard your story of hell, I mocked you. I laughed at you. I told people you were a liar. I told people that could never be true. And he said, Jesus Christ came to me and took me to hell and showed me hell. And I come to repent and ask your forgiveness. I said, I hugged him. I said, honey, that's okay. A lot of people do because they don't understand what God has for us. It's so great. And that was the most precious thing for that, you know, that man to come and do that. Isn't that awesome? Wow. I feel the Holy Ghost. 
I went and did a, I had I gave permission for them to do plays of this many years now, plays of hell. So uh, a young lady came to me about four years ago. She was from uh, South Korea. Is it South where the preachers go? South Korea? Is it South or North? South Korea. She said, Mary, can we take your book and do a play in South Korea? I said, sure. She gave me a CD of, the, uh, of them preaching on hell, a play. 6,000 came to God in one day. 6,000. And then this book is translated in 150 languages. I've been traveling all over the world. Been to 128 nations preaching about hell and God told me like he's telling pastor that they're going to be a great revival breakout this um, work that Matt Dexter and Mars are doing on my book because they're highly educated they really are precious marsha has got many degrees in Dexter too and God put them in my life to help me he did eat my son and daughter <laughs> He really, and, and Mark, he really put them in my life. Because Dexter cleared up a bunch of paperwork for me that I've been fighting for years, hired two lawyers to clean up some paperwork. If you ever had paperwork, it kept, you know, you never got it cleaned up. Have you? How many people's had business paper? Yeah, well, Dexter helped me. And then everything changed. And so that's a miracle to me. You know, and he didn't charge me a penny. He helped me, helped me, helped me. And I'm bragging on him. He went on the way home. He said, you shouldn't brag on me, but I'm bragging on him. Amen. When you got wonderful saints like that. So the problem is this, that when God gives you a work, the pastor can tell you, some of the stuff you got to guard, some of it you can't tell everybody. Do you understand? Years ago, I couldn't have told you this because God told me don't tell it yet. You couldn't have understood it. You know what I mean? I've told it, and I've told about different sections, but there's only at times God will release me to tell you things that are that really in the Bible. Okay, I can tell you this. When I went down to hell with Jesus, I went three hours a night. He guided me, he talked to me. He was always in the human form, and I was in the spirit. And he said, I, he said, I want to show you something. And we walked over to an area that looked, it was all dead and dry and black, and it was called the uh, abyss. It was snakes and worms, but the ground was hot and dry. The hell was hot everywhere. But we went over there, and I heard moans and cries. And what I saw, I've never told this before, Pastor. There a crack came in the, earth, the ground, and it opened up. And there was, <laughs> there was white angels, big wings with black chains all around them. Chains. There were chains. Moaning and crying. And the hole closed back up. I said, Jesus, what is that? He says, doesn't my word say that there'll be an everlasting chains to the day of the great white throne judgment? And I, 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 was, I thought in the scriptures we talked about some of the fallen angels. But a lot of people think they're demons. I don't know any difference. But I really saw them moaning and crying and walking and, and chained with big black chains. And they had huge, huge white feathers all the way to their ankles. And they never lifted their heads. All they did, there was hundreds of them crying and crying. So he gave me the scripture. That's all I know. They're in everlasting chains till the day of the judgment of God. That's wild, isn't it? So it makes you think about who is this mighty God we serve. Well, he's a mighty God. I'm telling you, he's mighty. In Exodus, let's go to Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. I want to tell you something. And this goes along with what we're talking about today. We're going to talk about Almighty God. Exodus chapter 13. We're going to go to verse 21 and 22. 
Hallelujah. When, when God says something to his prophets and his apostles, he makes a day when they can reveal what God has said. Amen? Okay, chapter 13. We're going to go to verse 21. Hallelujah. Ooh, I feel his Holy Spirit. We're going to go to chapter 20 first. And they took, I'm sorry, 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. And by night, what did he put before them? What did he put, babies? Why did he put a pillar of fire? Think about how would you like to wake up at night and see the glory of God and the fire all around your home? I have seen that so many times. How many have seen it? You? It's awesome, isn't it, honey? It's a protection that God has for us. I've had people come to my home and said, Mary, your house is on fire. I said, really? <laughs> real Holy Ghost fire and, and, and even when Shambach used to preach remember the tents would light up with fire Holy Ghost power amen but look at God okay it was a pillar of fire oh hallelujah to guide them by day and night he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people and that was when Moses right guys was leading them out and Dexter said the other day, their shoes never wore out. How would you like to have a pair of shoes last 40 years? Amen? Amen? Think of God. What a great God. And he rained down food for him. Think about God. So we have a God that is so powerful, and he wants you to know that. And then we're going to go over here to another one in Exodus chapter 40. And I want to read verse 34 and 35. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Now, Lord, you could do that here today. We want your power, right, guys? We want to see your glory. Let your cloud of glory come in here, Heavenly Father. Show your might and power in Jesus' name, Father, by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode their own, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. How would you like that? Well, we, he's got some pure oil from heaven. Amen? I'm excited about that. I love stuff like that. I love what God does, strange things, wild things. Amen? And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, look at this. Hallelujah. And the children of Israel went onward on all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken away up, then they journeyed not till the next day, then it was taken up. So God led them by a cloud. Think about it. Oh, my God, isn't he awesome? He is so great. He can do anything. He is God. Amen. I wanted to talk. Okay, amen. We're going to talk about the angels in a little bit. Okay, Isaiah 63, 9. Wow. I'm going to read verse 8 first. For he said, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. In all their afflictions, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. If you have been into the occult and you have changed and give your heart to God, you're a new creature. God has changed your old sinful nature to his nature. And you can be encouraged because God is he's, in, he's a God that wants to change you. He's a God that wants to bring you out of the pit and put you on high. He's a God that sees what the devil's done to you. And he wants to bring you to a place in him where you can abide forever and ever and ever. Amen? And you got to have faith that when you pray, God does it. God does it. Amen? He can't lie. He's not a man that he should lie. 
He's a great God. I love, I love the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Okay, now when God wants to speak to you, he can do great mighty things. Amen. How many here has heard the voice of God talk to you? Well, praise God. You never forget it, do you, son? Never, never. Go to Ezekiel chapter 2. Okay, before this, we're going to go right back up here in chapter 1, right above it, verse 24. Now he's talking to Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a prophet, and God showed him great and mighty things. And when they, and he's talking about these living creatures he saw. I can't read it all. You can read the whole chapter later, chapter 1, okay? Please read it. Because it tells you mighty things God did that's in the Holy Bible. And that's also in heaven. These things are in heaven. These holy creatures I'm talking about are in heaven. Amen? And it says, in, and otherwise, which, when I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, it's the voice of Almighty, the voice of speech. And as the noise of a host, when they stood, they let down their wings. He's talking these mighty creatures of God. He saw them. Ezekiel saw them, and and it says there was like even, uh, I saw those creatures. Uh, the ones I saw was 50 foot high around the throne, and they say the peacock, the beautiful peacocks, I live where there's a lot of peacocks, that the feathers that go out are like the eyes in these angels that's in heaven that have the eyes in their wings, the front and the back, and they are, they they're called the holy beast. They have six wings full of eyeballs. They can see you. They can blink and see. see they, they've got power. Fire comes out of their feet and the top of their head. These angels. Okay, let's look at this. Verse 25. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads. And they, and they stood and then they let down their wings. Now, this is God. And above the firmament there was above their heads was the likeness of a throne. See, they were under that holding up the throne of God. I picture it like that. And the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness of the appearance of a man upon it. Ezekiel saw this. It came down to him to talk to him. And then I saw a color of ember at the appearance of fire round about and within. For it was the appearance of the loins even upward. And for the appearance of his loins downward. I saw it was the appearance of fire and its brightness round about. I have seen many years ago the Lord sent an angel to me. And he was dressed in fire. Holy fire. And he had been having me read about a, a great man that helped children all over the earth. If you can help Marsha feed those children, there's more. Um, she is from Venezuela. We need help for them babies. Pastor said we could talk about to feed them. But here, this man that I knew, you know, when, when he was talking to me in the fire, he said, God loves children. This these fire full of fire and he had a, a torch like a torch in his hand and he said to me this is the the torch of love and he said i'm going to touch you with this because god sent me to bless you to give away the love how he feels about children and people going to hell this way before i was about well i'd already seen hell so this angel touched my eyes and it was warm heat went in them then he touched my hands like flames went all over him. He touched my heart and it was like a burst, a boom. Heat of love like I've never, ever felt. I dropped to my knees and began to thank God. Then he touched my feet. And he said, now God has sent me to bless you with this love. And I want you to give it away. And I do that at times when, I, when he tells me to. I'll release it so that you can feel that same love. Because it takes that. He was telling me, sometimes 
people need this to break barriers of, of stuff off of us. You understand? I, I'm telling you, he's done so many beautiful things. And then the angel left. But I, I've never been the same since then. Great compassion, great love. Amen. And then we keep looking at all of this. And then look at the uh, verse 28. As the appearance of a bowl that in the cloud of the day and rain. And so was the appearance of the brightness round about. He's talking about that around, around Almighty God. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory. Hallelujah of the Lord. How many want that glory? How many want a passion for the Lord? How many really want him? So we need to ask him to bring his glory in the tabernacle. Amen? I mean, people, we're in the midst of the, the love of God. And how many pastors let me talk like this? Trying to tear that devil's kingdom down. Well, devil, we want the glory and we're going to get it, devil. Jesus' name. Amen? And then he hears a voice and it speaks to him. Now, how would you like to be out worshiping? You see the chariot of God, the angels. What would you do? Faint? We all would. We would be faint, okay? Do it, Lord, do it. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak unto thee. God told him, Stand up, man. Amen? <laughs> I love God. I love those wild things he does. Don't we? He's wild, buddy. Amen. And the Spirit entered to me. This is Ezekiel. And he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. And I heard him that spoke to me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious house. Now, how many of you laid your crosses down? How many of you out there that used to serve God, you quit? Honey, you better take your cross back up. Because God has a purpose for you. It may not be what I do or pastor does or any of us, but you're special to God. That's why the scriptures say many are called but few chosen because the call when some of them don't make it. I mean, you got to go through hot fire, man. I mean, I'm serious. you got to go through all kind of stuff. And, when, and it's like, oh, the job. You have a job you don't like, but you got to do it to make a living. But Almighty God calls you to do something. I was young and had little children and uh, no college education, anything. They said, I've called you to go to hell. I'm taking you to hell, woman. I mean, think about it. And even men, okay, you chicken men, how many of you would like to go to hell and see these things? I have met chicken men, chicken, pastor their chicken. I went, I went somewhere in the coldest weather to preach, Minnesota. And the pastor says, well, Mary, we got a visitor that wants to meet you. He saw hell. I said, really? And said, yeah, he's wrote a little book, and he wants you to talk to you. <laughs> so anyhow, it was freezing. It was so cold. So we went back in the office, and he was introducing me to this man. And his wife was with him, and he said, I brought a book. And he looked pretty elderly, you know. And I looked at the book, and I looked at him, and I saw a big scar on his throat. And he said, Mary, I saw hell. I said, how come I've never heard of you? I've heard of Bill Weiss and all these other people. He said, I didn't tell nobody for 25 years. I said, really? I said, you're a chicken, right? And he said, yes, ma'am, I am. He said, you see this hole in my throat? I went into a coma. I couldn't breathe. And God took me to hell. He said, God blessed me to come out of the coma, and I saw all of hell, saw things you saw and everything, but I was scared to tell anybody because I thought they'd think I was crazy. I said, how many years? I asked his wife, has he known all this? She said, 20 years, ma'am, and he's never told anybody but a few people, and then I made him write a book. She helped him write a little bitty book, and I said, sir, I feel very sorry for you. I said, God wants this told. You got to have courage to tell it. You got to get up there and tell it to people. And he said he would. But I didn't have much compassion for him because God meant him to do it after he got out of the hospital and stuff, didn't he? So there's certain things that they are. Another man saw hell, never told anybody. Several of them I met, they're chickens. 
They're afraid to get laughed at, talked about. Now, you guys know I'm telling the truth. Right, God? If God showed you hell, how many men would tell it? See, one hand. <laughs> he would, God gave him a liver. One meeting was at years ago. He got a brand new liver. Uh, and, yeah, God gave a word of knowledge and gave him a liver. Yeah. So God can do these things. So nobody wants to go see hell, huh? You do? I pray for you, too. That'll really shake you up, honey. Is that okay, Pastor, to pray for the sinner? You do, too, baby doll. That's the one that named her little babies today, didn't you, honey? Wow. I'm excited about God. He, he's speaking to me now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Lord. He said, tell the men. He said, tell you men to get courage. And tell you men, if you have seen flashes of hell, tell it. They're going to think you're crazy anyway. It don't matter. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I mean, we got blue hair, pink hair, green hair, right? We're tall, we're skinny, we're short, we're fat. Think about it. Does it really matter? We're God's people. <laughs> you guys just, God's going to do some great things with you. Yep, and then we got to get the men out of being afraid. After you're in pastor, I would be scared not to tell what God told me. He goes all over meeting all these wild people. Wild, aren't they? Wild. He comes back with these books and beautiful stories. You've got a great pastor, man. He, we watch him at home, a Shekinah on home, and he's just telling it like it is, you know. And Dexter does too. Dexter and Martha's going to be got four television shows on Cross TV and another. Dexter gets up there preaching like a house of fire. And just a preaching machine, you know. And uh, it's really real. God wants you men to be bold. Bold, man. More than us women. I said to God, why did you show me hell, Daddy? He said, you've got a big mouth. <laughs> I said, thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he put the fear of God in me after showing me hell. And then he takes me to outer darkness in hell. In outer darkness. You guys, it's a river, a, a lake of fire. It's humongous. And this was before he brought me back home. He took me to the lake of fire, and it's in the galaxy. He took my hand and said, let's go. And it's in the scriptures in Matthew. And so we went out of hell into the galaxies, and I said, Jesus, where are we going? He said, we're going to go to outer darkness. And he said, there you're going to see horrible things. And he said to me, what are you going to do about it? I said, what can I do about it, Jesus? So we went down into, it looked like a, in the middle of the galaxy, there's this dark, dark place. So we walked into that place. We quit moving and walked. And there was no, no demons, no devils, no, e no, no like in hell. We're walking and I hear crackling fire. And I, and I could see the light of a fire. He said, child, this is outer darkness. Because everything was dark around it. And we go, and then there's a lake. Boiling hot liquid like that volcano you see on TV. That's just like the fires that was in this big lake. And he turned to me, and he points at me. What you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? I said, do what, Lord? He said, I'm showing you. And warning you to tell the people about hell. Because this is where they're going to end up if they don't listen. So I said, okay, God. So I, it's like I'm a little student, you know. And we walked to the edge of it. And then he said, look around the edges. And there was, coming out of the fire was skeleton hands. Grabbing the, the end and sucked back under by a powerful suction of whoom, fire. Like whoom. He would come and go and and pull them right out, and they'd scream. Then I looked in the fire, and I seen them swimming. Skeletons. They were screaming and boiling in hot fire. I'm dead serious. I was so frightened. I said, God, what do you want me to do? He said, you're going to tell them what I've shown you. You're going to tell the world. You're going to write books. You're going to go and tell what I say to keep them from eternal damnation. Brothers and sisters, we got to wake up. We got to wake that God is calling us, sweetheart. And 
I stood there, and he said, this is a two-fold revelation. But he wouldn't, they would, printers wouldn't let me put that in there, but i tell about it. Out of darkness, they did. But what happened, I lo- he said, look up about two miles up, above where outer darkness was, the flames of hell, fire. It wasn't hell, it was outer dark. And I looked up, and I saw like the earth. It was the earth, like our earth, brother. You know, I saw the dirt, I saw the grass, and there was like maybe 10 feet of just the earth in the air above these fires. And then he said, look, and I heard feet marching, people marching, and I looked, and there was every nation, ever, uh, uh, oh, man, ever person's nationality was in this group of people walking. And sisters and brothers, their eyes were glued shut. Their ears was glued shut. And Jesus said, who's going to warn them from coming to everlasting damnation? I said, Jesus. He said, they have eyes to see and ears to hear. But they do not hear and they do not see what I'm telling them to repent. And he said, child, look, an avalanche happened. About 400 people all at once fell down into those everlasting flames. Their clothes burn off. They turned into a skeleton and were screaming, help me, God, help me. What are we going to do about it, church? What are we really? We're safe. We're covered in the blood. But what about our neighbors? What about the wickedest person you know? Oh, my gosh. I feel the Holy Ghost pastor. I feel the Holy Spirit strong. He's really here. Can we bow our heads, sweetheart? Pastor, Pastor, come up here, woman. I just want him up here. I want you up here, woman. There's a holy power in here. It's a holy power, babies. So right there in your seats, honey, repent to God for not fully obeying him. We don't see this knowledge, brothers and sisters. It needs to be told everywhere. Yes, they're going to call you crazy. Yes, they're going to say you don't know what you're saying. But give them the Bible. Give them Jesus. Oh, my Lord. Right, darling. We've got to work together as a team. Help each other. Pray for our families. we got to get serious about the Lord. That precious blood he shed has never lost its power. It will still wash away sins. It will still make you new again. It will, honey. That power of the blood of the Lamb is more great than anything in this earth. And look at all the disasters, the heartaches, and sorrows all over our globe. We better get ready for the Lord could we come back. We don't, I don't know, but Pastor and all of us believe it could be soon. It could be soon, sweetheart. We got to get ready. I mean, the devil's not playing games. He wipes out whole cities, don't he? Over Overseas, they had earthquakes that killed hundreds, didn't they, honey? Time after time, you look at the news and you wonder what's next. Don't you, babies? So I want you to have a burden for the lost. You got to care. You got. You could pack this place out. Bring them to church. That's what church is about, a hospital, to heal the sick. How many of you were really lost till you came here? Look how God's blessed you and strengthened you, baby. And you got families. Many of them are safe. One of the brothers here today that's from another church, his mother is 99 years old and never been saved. I said, you, I told him, I said, son, you better tell her to get born again. You better tell her to get saved. And he said he would, you know. 99. Wow. Ooh, hallelujah. Ooh, ooh. Pastor, if you have any. We don't hear this very much in the modern church. 
that this is the truth. And I know this, I know God really wants us to have a burden. He wants it. When you said, when the Lord said to you, what are you going to do about it? Now, I did have an experience. I only saw briefly a part of hell in, 2000, in 2002. Hmm. You, they've all heard it. So I, uh, I'll give you the, okay, she wants to hear it. I, I'll tell you the short, as quickly as I can, but I'll tell you what. The Lord said to me the same thing he said to her. I had been reading John Wesley's book, and John Wesley was a great reformer. He affected all of Europe was changed because of his preaching. And America was impacted. Then I found out that I come from five generations of preachers and they were co-laborers in the John Wesley movement. Anyway, I, he said, if I could, before I would ordain a man to the ministry, I would suspend him over hell for 24 hours and then send him out to preach. You see, if you go through the scriptures, Jesus talked he mentioned hell more times than he did heaven, warning people. He said, if you're he said, if you lust after a woman with your eye, you've committed adultery. You know, he said the next breath. Therefore, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Yeah. It's better to go to life with one eye than two to hell. And yet lust and immorality is rampant in our society and no one cares. No one's even afraid. And Jesus said, if your eye makes you sin, pluck it out because you're going to go to hell if you die with lust. He said, if you hate your brother, you'll go to hell. That's what the Bible says. Jesus said, if you hate, you're a murderer. But, but we don't hear anything about that. There's no fear of God. Anyway, so I prayed. I said, Lord, I don't know if you, I didn't even know if the Lord would answer my prayer, but I prayed, God, will you show me hell? Not because I want to see it. I didn't want to see it, but I wanted my heart to be impacted. Because I want to, I want, personally, I want to feel what God feels. I want to agree with the way he thinks, not how everybody in church is. I want to be in sync with him. So I prayed, and after a couple of weeks, I had this experience. I became very tired. One Tuesday afternoon, I couldn't stay awake. It never happened to me before. I was so tired, I couldn't stay awake. I'd never done this before, but I left the church office and went home to go take a nap. Never done that before. About three in the afternoon, I walked in the house, went on my bed, fell right to sleep. As soon as I did, I was carried away in the spirit. And I was in a theater... There were 35 people in the theater. I saw some of the people I recognized. This is more than a dream. I saw Bobby Connor, Paul Keith Davis, Rick Joyner, Bob Jones. There were four people I recognized in the theater. The others I didn't know. I was irritated because the projector wasn't running and the, nothing was showing. And I was also irritated. I was vexed. Why doesn't anybody in the theater care that the projector's not on? And I didn't know the interpretation of this experience yet. So I said to myself, I'm going to find the power switch and I'm going to turn the power on. So I looked around the room and I looked until I found it. So I put my hand on the switch to turn it on and then this thought came to me, do you have the authority to do this? You should better ask permission from a manager. So with my hand on the switch, I scanned the room to see if there was a manager and there was the prophet Bob Jones sitting next to Rick Joyner, and he had a uniform on, and on his shirt it said manager. So I looked at him. This is real. I locked my eyes with him. I said, Bob, shouldn't I turn this on? He nodded. He said, yes. And I turned it on, and the reel started turning. When everyone heard the noise of the reel, we all scrambled to our seats to, to see what was on. Immediately, I saw one of the openings from earth going into hell. I saw a, a door open up. I saw a blade like a er, big caterpillar tractor, yes, yes. like an earth mover blade. Yes. And it pushed about 60 or 65 people into hell. Oh and then the door slammed shut. The door was bigger. I knew that you couldn't uh, drive a tank through it. It was so when it slammed shut, it was locked. And then there was a slippery, slimy, slimy green slope 
so slimy that if I knew that if you had the claws like a bear, you could not stop yourself from sliding down. It was a dark cavern inside the earth, dark. And this is only a small part, but it was a pool at the, uh, and it was boiling and it was urine and it was urine and feces. Yes. And it, you've seen something like that? It was yeah, it was sewer, sewer, sewer. sewers. It was a sewer. sewer yeah. You've seen that? Yes. OK, it was boiling. Yes. It, was a, it was about as big as this room. Yes. And it was a it was urine and feces boiling and there were souls in there bobbing up and down. And they would go down, then you'd see a hand come up, and, yes. and the, it was tumultuous as it was boiling, and it was thick, you know, like you boil syrup, yes. and the bubbles come up slow, like water boils fast, but this was boiling, you'd see a slow boom, a bubble as it was boiling, yes. and a soul would come up screaming, ah, and they'd go back under, yes. and I saw the faces of all the people falling into the In the, in the experience, you can know everybody's thoughts. Yes. In the spirit, you know all their thoughts, yes. and you know what they're thinking, everything. Yes. So as they were sliding down, I could, I could understand 60 people's thoughts all in one second. Yes. I knew what they were thinking. Every single one of them, not one of them, thought before they died, when I die, I'm going to hell. They all thought they were safe. Everyone thought they were safe before they died. When the door slammed shut, they, I saw also the horror on their face. All of them received the instant revelation, you're damned forever. You are damned forever, and you'll never get out. That, that realization pierced all of them. As they all fell into the boiling thing, they all were, had deep regret, and they were screaming and howling. Oh, what have we done with our life? What have we done? What have we done? What have we done? We can't get out. I watched them all go in. And I don't know if you remember, but the day before, right in our own valley, one of the people I was made to know who he was, there was a kidnapping in Quartz Hill in, a, in, a, in 2002. Do you guys remember this? Kidnapped two girls. And he took him out and he drove him out to the desert near Boron, I think, or somewhere out there. And the sniper shot him. Remember that? They killed him. I saw him going into hell. I saw him. Actually, I saw him bobbing in the thing. So when I woke up, I was uh, traumatized. I, I remember my heart was beating like this. And I was sweating and I was all traumatized. Oh, my God. I said, God, what? I said, God, what? What are you trying to say? Here's what he said to me. In, no, inwardly, I heard the clear inward voice, the Holy Spirit. He said, I want to show my people hell. I want them to see it, but they don't want to see it. But I want them to see it. Here's what he said, because I want them to do something about it. So you said, what, is he gonna, what are you going to do about it? That's what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, I want my people to do something about it. And that's all I got. Then... Two weeks later, Paul Keith Davis came to speak here for the first time. And he said, when he walked in my office, be five minutes before the service, he said, when I was praying this morning, God spoke to me. He told me to ask you, did you have a dream? I said, yes. He said, tell it to me. I told it to him. He said, that's very interesting. I said, why is it interesting to you? He said, because Bob Jones had the same exact experience two weeks ago. I said, I saw him in my dream. I knew it was, I, when it happened, I came downstairs, I told Melinda, I said, I had a dream, but it was more than a dream. I went somewhere, and I saw Bob, and I talked to him, and he talked to me. So he said, will you write it down? I want to give it to Bob. So he, I wrote it down, gave it to Bob. Later, I saw Bob at a conference. Here's what Bob said. Bob told it to Paul Keith. Paul Keith told me, and then I talked to Bob personally. When Bob was in the theater, he saw the whole thing exactly like I saw he was there. I asked him, Bob, what about it? He was there. Here's what he said. Next to him, the Lord stood and, and interpreted. Now, I didn't see the Lord standing next to Bob, but Bob said the Lord was standing next to him, and here's what the Lord said. He said, uh, the reason the power was not on is the theater wasn't, projector wasn't running is because it's wired for 220, but the church is only walking in 110. And Jesus told Bob, 
It's Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. He said, when the church will choose to walk in Galatians 2.20, I will turn the power on. He said, it'll be the greatest show on earth of signs and wonders and miracles. And then they'll have power to stop people from going to hell. When the church decides to walk in Galatians 2.20, that means we have to start thinking, my life is no longer mine. I don't live for myself. I don't live for the American dream. I don't live for my comfort. I don't live for my retirement. I don't live for my vacation. I live for the will of God. He said, when we have that mindset, he'll turn the power on. And that's why my prayer right now, my biggest prayer right now, for my own heart and for our church, and I'm praying this, that God is my witness. I'm praying that supernaturally God will impart the burden of the Lord. If we don't have the burden, we have, we have to understand what she's saying is real. People are backsliders go to hell. This once saved, always saved is a doctrine from Satan. It's not in the Bible. And all this ooey, gooey, greasy grace is from hell. It's to take all the fear of God away. It's what she's saying is true. God loves us more than we know. You can't express how much God loves us. But he's a holy God. And there is an eternal judgment. There is damnation. And we should have the burden of the Lord to do whatever it takes to get the fire of God flowing in our city. Pastor, I'll be glad to lay hands on every one of you and release my burden on you, part of it. I'm serious. We, gotta, we have to. Um, when a pastor was talking about that, I remember uh, I had a lot of grief, too. I mean, my husband and my family really stood by me, but I had to go to the emergency room one night. I was seeing hell all over the place, and the doctors told me I needed a vacation and all that. I said, no, sir. Are you saved? You really feel the, the, the power of God. And uh, I, I prayed so hard, Pastor, for souls. I actually threw up blood praying for after I saw hell because I didn't want my family to go there. And one year, um, I can say this truly, it's been 42 years ago I saw hell. Every family member on my side had been born again. Not one of them been lost. Every one of them. Because I, I got on the TV back then, and my cousin didn't told about hell. Chattanooga, Tennessee. And hell is a place you don't want to ever go. Like he visited, saw that. I saw a vat in hell, a big black brown wall, okay? It was a circle like a water tower. And on it was written, the abominations of desolations. It was written on there. And I said, Lord, what is that? He said, look. And I saw people bobbing up and down in liquid fire, like one of those movies, one of those wild movies of fire and people burning. There were hundreds in there. And he said, look, I'll show you who's in there. And demons, and they were like demon angels too, dragging somebody with a black chain, a skeleton that just died. And they went and threw him in that fire. And it, was, it wasn't what you saw. This was real fire bubbling up and down and bumping down and up and down. And they said this is the torment of preachers and, and, and people that lied about hell. They're thrown into this liquid fire to burn forever, ever. And he said it's an abomination to God that once we know the truth, we better tell it. And that they, they're suffering, or their screams, is like he said, they come up and scream. And then one Korean pastor told me that he had a dream of his own mother floating in fire and her eyes were screaming at him. Save my people, save my people. And that's a pastor right here in California. Yes, he wrote books or he comes, he comes from Korea and comes here and preaches. He's written several books. And, and, yes, he saw hell. He saw hell. Another pastor in Korea saw hell. I met him years ago. And so God is wanting you to have the same burden to, see, to get people saved. It gives you a love like you've never known. Would you want that tonight? You, everybody? 
Maybe we'll get that holy oil and just touch it on the forehead. We got our little bottle. Would you like a touch of that oil too, darlings? We need it, honey. But while you're in your seats, we're going to all repent of anything we've done, okay? Let's get that all cleared up and really mean it, okay? That good, children? That good? You guys happy? All right, let's pray. Okay. Father, we come to close our eyes. We come to you tonight just as we are. And the reason I say close your eyes, if you look around, you won't be focusing. Focus on Jesus. He he's wants you to draw to him. And you've got to say, Lord Jesus, Lamb of God, and you in the audience too. God wants to save your soul. He really save you. As my friends say, save to the bone. So tonight, if you're watching this program and you heard his testimony of mine, if you're not born again, ask Jesus Christ right now to, to save you. To, and you repent. Say, I repent of my wicked sins, Lord Jesus. I repent, Lord God, to you. I believe you're the Son of God, Jesus Christ. I believe you came on and walked the earth and gave your life for me to be forgiven of my sins and have, have, I can have eternal salvation. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I give my life to you, Lord Jesus. I want you to make my life, God, a blessing. I want to serve you, Jesus. Forgive me of all my wicked sins. In Jesus' name, let your precious blood wash over me. And then re fill me with your holy power, Lord Jesus. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. And give me the power to preach and to teach your precious word. To save the lost in Jesus' name. And if you've said that prayer, they have emails here. You can email them. They have places you can get in touch with the church. Find a good Bible-based teaching church and get involved in the things of Almighty God. Hallelujah. So praise God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah.